successful program. Tommy Morrissey, Trey Steins, J.W. Lucas, the men in stripes, and the season is underway. Boopy Miller, redshirt sophomore from Chicago, running the point transfer from Central Michigan. Carr being hounded by Michael. Here's Solace, who played two years for Mark Few at Gonzaga. Miller with a shot clock at five. Salas, rise and fire. Good defensive possession for Elon that time. Wake Forest, got to get some flexibility, a little better ball movement on the first possession, but you're going to enjoy watching Miller, number zero. Elon is really young, but they have a fifth-year transfer point guard, number 10, Rob Higgins. McKinnon. If that's going to be the matchup tonight. You're going to have force against athleticism. The athleticism comes from McKinnon at 6'5", 6'6", the transfer can make some plays. And then again, you've got my guy's Childress, who's just tough. He's just, he'll be just tough. Childress averaged double digits a year ago. Third year for Steve Forbes. And you look for Hildreth to score a little bit more this year than he did in the past. Solace missed. McKinnon rebounds. And out to Rob Higgins, fifth year senior, playing in his 94th collegiate game. Elon wants to be a patient team. Great ball move. They've got a wonderful guard in Higgins that can make some solid plays. And there he is. He averaged 11 points a game in each of his four years at St. Francis Brooklyn. One thing you talk about this team, and you talk about this guy transferred from St. Fran, he's a leader. A tough guy that can get out and defend. Not going to score very much. That's a positive play to get to the inside basket. Miller on the take. The turnaround. And the rebound by Kendall Campbell, the freshman from Atlanta. Two solid possessions for the Phoenix. Campbell sets a screen for McKinnon. McKinnon, 15-footer. He's got two great looks. He's got length at 6'5", 6'6". But he's got to do a better job in coming up and closing them out and contesting on those jump shots. He can make that shot from the mid-range all night long. Preseason second team, CAA. Conference Rookie of the Year a season ago. Marsh. Wake is 0 for 4 shooting to start the night. Elon is 3 for 3. And Wake Forest a season ago was a team that shot a shade under 45%, which was 12th best, excuse me, 46%, which was 5th best in the ACC. But they've got to get better shot selection. That was a rush shot by Marsh. Here we go. First turnover of the night for Elon a year ago. They gave it away about 12 and a half times the contest. And you look at this lineup. You've got a couple of guys that obviously the first time they've touched the floor is the Demon Deacon, Salas, and Miller. Miller is very good, quick, and sees the floor well. He's got to get his, get his legs together. Miller lobs it for Marsh. Kick out the corner. And the three missed out there by Wake Forest, who has started 0 for 5. Higgins had it blocked. Opportunity in transition. Miller right to the hoop. That's what you can expect to see out of Miller. Push the ball in transition and finish strong. Miller broke his ankle after four games last year at Central Michigan, all freshman team two years ago. McKinnon. Hildreth clears the board, tilting the court downhill. Hildreth in the lane, can't score, but he was fouled. <laughs> Billy Taylor in his second year as the head coach of Elon, they lost their first 19 Division I games a year ago and then rallied. They won six out of eight late January, early February. He's a veteran, Belmont Abbey, Ball State, Lehigh. A veteran, solid coach. I first met him when he was an assistant with Fran McCafferty at, at UNC Greensboro about 15, 18 years ago. Played at Notre Dame. He's a solid guy. And, and, and he's going to build some things. As you mentioned, lost what first 14, 15 games a season ago. And they just kind of settled things down into the season with eight wins. They're going to be a force in the CAA this season.
Phoenix went eight and 24 a year ago, six and 12 in league. They've started today three out of five from the floor, much deeper this year. McKinnon, the three, drilled it. He's got seven, he's three of four from the floor. He's had three outstanding looks at the basket. Two in the mid range, one deep. Which gotta do a better job of crowding him. One thing about this Elon team also, not really that big, relatively speaking, the Wake Forest, but they've got a lot more depth this season. Salas created some space and hit from the elbow. First pass as a Demon Deacon for Salas, creating many more to come. A good athlete can score in personal ways. Highly touted recruit, but didn't play a ton at Gonzaga. A three for Simpkins off the mark. Hildreth controls the rebound. Hildreth pushes, Hildreth spins. Hildreth cannot finish, but he was fouled. Elon off to a hot shooting start. Four is six from the floor and one on one from three. Nine five Phoenix early. There's never Steve Forbes in his fourth year. He's won everywhere at Barton Community College, at Northwest Florida State, and big time at East Tennessee State. 50 and 40 at Wake. He thinks this might be his best team, Stan. Well, they've got depth. They've got great size, and there's a, basically a very young basketball team. A lot of new ingredients, and I think that Wake Forest is, is right on the move. But they did, should have won, should have gone to the NCAAs last year. Felt like they should have the last two years. Maybe didn't win the right games. I feel like this season is going to be crucial for Wake Forest as they continue to evolve into the season play. They've gone 31 and 5 here at the Joel the last two years. Back to back 10 win ACC seasons for the first time since 1995 through 1997. Back in the day, if you went 10 and 10 and won most of your games at home in the ACC, that got you postseason play. It's a new day in basketball. DeAndre Smart hands off McKinnon right back to Smart. Scores at the rim. Smart's a young, physical guy for this Elon basketball team. Not very big, only about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, but very physical at 230 pounds. He played a lot last year. It gives him quality minutes. Also in the game for Elon, you've got a guy you better keep your eye on, and that being Zach Irvin. Andrew Carr goes to work, and he can't score, but will shoot free throws. Mark's done a nice job on the glass after the timeout, out rebounding Wake, six to three, but this time dribble penetration and getting a very high percentage shot for a very young player that I think Elon's gonna like this year. Not gonna take a lot of jump shots, Dave, but he's gonna grind inside. Nice little give and go action, get you a score. Carr shot 77% at the line last year. This is game number 83 for the senior from Westchester, Pennsylvania, a transfer from Delaware. We talked about the depth and the size of Wake Forest. One big goes out, and, 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 and Matthew Marsh and Brian Heller in the game. You've got Duke, you've got Lynch, and someone that can run the pool. Let's see how the matchups go. He's kind of he to get his get it. Smart unable to hit in tight. Wake pulls the rebound. Carr backing his way in. Carr turns, fires, and an offensive foul. He hooked him. Nice job in the post. I like the little crab dribble. He got a little over aggressive with the left arm. Watch this. He does a good job. He got the height advantage. Get there, get there. You see the arm just bow out just a little bit. Might not have called it this early in the season myself, but hey, what can I say? Offensive foul. A steal by Fredrickson. The freshman leads the break. Salas fires. Fredrickson decks it, gets inside, scoops it up and in to tie the game. Known as a perimeter shooter, knocks down his first basket as the Demon Deacon in the paint. They're going to give the time out to the Phoenix. Fredrickson, Stan, 
a freshman from Oklahoma. You see the move here, highly recruited player who really is known for threes, won the three-point contest at the Curry Camp, won the three-point contest at the Final Four, number two player in the state of Oklahoma, scored over 2,000 high school points. Fredrickson is one of several freshmen that we're expecting to see action today. This, as you mentioned, is a deep Wake Forest lineup. And so you, you know, you look at some different combinations. You've got a couple of guys that are yet to play, or, you know, sitting out due to injury and whatnot. So what I like early about this Wake team, they've got size. And they know how to use that size. Zach Irvin, yeah. who one time was recruited by Steve Forbes to ETSU off the inbound. Fredrickson. This is where you like having a guy like Salas in the game. Off the Hildreth miss, Elon can run. Simpkins, duck under and scores. We talked about the athleticism of Wake Forest. Well, Elon's got a little bit of the same. We've got a guy like Simpkins that can get to the basketball. Zach Irvins, we just mentioned a moment ago, can knock down threes. And keep your eye on 22 L.A. Pratt. Hildreth to the bucket, second chance won't fall. And Elon trying to clear the rebound. Irvin battling, and he does get it out to Simpkins. Ahead to McKinnon for three. Second opportunity, Harrell, a three for Irvin. That's what he does, <laughs> trying to tell you. Shooters roll to up the lead to 19-11. Irvin's got a pair of threes. It's an eight nothing run for the Phoenix. Zach Irvin missed part of all of the 2021 season. And so he came in having ACL. He's knocked down a lot of threes in his career. This is in transition. This is McKinnon. Now he now can shoot the ball. But the second chance opportunity, not giving up on the play, and you find a wide open shooter at the top of the F. Shooters roll like that, Dave. See that little backspin on that? Bam. Knocks it in. And here's what I, here's what, 12.45. Lots of time to go. I like the spring in, in Elon. I like the fact that Wake Forest is trying to take advantage of their size. Can they wear Elon down? Those shots aren't going to always fall. But if I'm Billy Taylor, I've got to be ecstatic of the way my team has come out and been competitive in his first five or six minutes of this ball game. You mentioned Billy Taylor, a coach for Fran McCaffrey on two different occasions. Hildreth goes inside, ceiling, but unable to put it away is Keller. And another chance for Elon. And they knock it home again. T.K. Simpkins, the sophomore from Brooklyn. This is a team that knocked down eight or more three-point baskets 12 different times this past season, including 10 against Monmouth and 10 against Indiana. So they're not afraid of the big lights. Elon is four of five on threes. Wake is yet to hit one. Heldreth the mid-range. Cam Bilden had a phenomenal scoring night or afternoon, I should say, against Alabama last Sunday. Not this time for Simpkins. Wake Forest trailing by nine early. Elon hot from the outside. Hey, 336th in the country, shot 30% from three. Billy Taylor said if they can touch the paint more tonight, they can get more open threes. So far, so good. Very impressed not only with the shot selection, but the fact nine out of 15, but keep this in mind too. Here's why I say you gotta be excited if you're Billy Taylor and Elon. They're out rebounding weight by four, and they're getting a great contribution from the bench. Outscoring the Demon Deacons at this point, 13 to two. Miller rubs off the screen. Goes to Carr. 
Zonka, the transfer from UCLA, lost it. The steal by Zach Irvin. Campbell was fouled. Oh, no, goaltending. Count the buck. Nice recognition, throw it over the top. Campbell able to finish it. Take a look there, help side comes just a little late, just a step late. You see his hand was on the rim as well as the block. Block might have been good, but touched the rim. Elon on a 13 to two run. Really nice job of taking Lake Forest out of the smooth flow offensively. Miller lost it going up. Campbell outlets to Higgins. Higgins into the corner for a hole, and he walked or stepped on the sideline. <laughs> Nick Dorn replaces Hull for Elon Dorn, the freshman from Charlotte who comes from an incredibly athletic family. Dad and brother in the NFL, another brother played high one, high D1 basketball. was with the Panthers at one time. Obviously, everybody in this neck of the woods knows the name Torin Dorn, but now young Mr. Nicholas, and we'll see what he can do. Open three. No good for Tonka, and I'll stay here. Zonka is a sophomore from Italy who played 22 games at UCLA last year. Steve Forbes recruited him out of high school and thinks he can be a difference maker. How he and Salas get, get along in practice. UCLA and Gonzaga matchups the last couple of years. I'm going to be interested to watch practice a little closer. See. Uh, Higgins with the steal, a three on two. Irvin, yes sir. You know, they did a nice job, but you can't go for the fake, and he's got his feet set, and that's one of his spots. He's an excellent wing shooter, in addition to being at the top of the key. Zach Irvin's been in rhythm, knocked down three threes. Three for three for Zach Irvin, and the lead has ballooned to 14 for the Phoenix. And he'll try to throw it into the second row. And Elon's doing a great job of reacting. They're moving down every pass. They're taking off driving lanes, making Wake Forest kind of have to think about everything they're doing. That time, just miscommunication. And that happens a lot this time of year. You're trying to run things. you got different combinations. Wake's got to tighten up from the defensive end. Too many easy looks. Elon's last win against an ACC opponent all the way back to 2005 as Campbell drains the three. Kendall Campbell, 6 eight freshman. Look what I got. 2005, the Phoenix beat Clemson, 74-69. Miller. Another turnover. That's the fifth for Wake Forest. You know guards? just said it a moment ago, taking Wake Forest out of their rhythm, but they're also as quick, and in some cases maybe even quicker than what you've seen on the first step of the Wake Forest guy. Wake's got to adjust to that on how to get the basketball to different players on the floor. Look at it again, we talk about it so much spacing. Great spacing, good ball movement, and jump shots by big guys. It's not a good one, but they'll take that. Pildreth, looking to snap an 8 nothing run, instead he gives it away. Great hustle. Elon's bench calling for a timeout, but a held ball. Elon has the arrow. That'll be turnover seven, Stan. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, no rhythm offensively and great aggression. The ball was loose, and what happens? You see two Elon players diving after a loose ball. Elon has outscored Wake Forest 19 to 2 over the last almost five minutes. Good look for Simpkins and he hits from the elbow. Got big guys that are stepping out and setting screens, and if you don't respect the screen, you kick back. If the guards are able to turn the corner and go downhill, they have a great ability to pull up and make the 12 to 15 foot jump shot, and you're seeing this big lead by the fighting Phoenix.
now McKinnon, after a long rest, gets back on the court seven points in seven minutes. This is one of the things that the Elon staff was concerned about. Who are going to be the other scores? It's yet another turnover by the Demon Deacons. The Deeks have more turnovers than they do field goals made. It's never a good thing. And if it was colder, you know what I'd tell you, right? You don't want to have more turnovers than it is the temperature. Unfortunately, we've been in that nice war spell lately. <laughs> this all works on the defensive side for Wake Forest. Campbell rebounded by Miller. Miller. That's, good. That's a good decision by Miller. Push the basketball, make them stop you, and make them stop the ball. If you don't stop the ball, get to your comfort area, which is right there in the paint, and you're able to score. A needed basket by the Demon Deacons. Snapped a run of almost three minutes that Wake did not score. Turnover by McKinnon. Heldreth in transition. Heldreth. Euro into the lane shot was blocked. Go under control. Jump stop on two feet. Finish there. Andrew Carr. Simpkins in the lane for Campbell. Elon off to a red hot start. Six of nine for three and in control early. Break, they put a heating pad on him. Looks to be okay. Here's the play. into a player, Campbell, and Lance Hard, Andrew Carr is a long young man at 6'10". Hopefully he can yeah. come back. This is Wake a little bit short-handed. Efton Reed is still waiting on his waiver from the NCAA. Lob play here to Marsh broken up, and Elon looking for more. Eighth turnover by the Demon Deacons. Nick Dorn forces his way in and will get to the line. Start to be, start looking at some trends and you get concerned about some things. At this point right now, Elon 14 of 22, Wake 5 of 17, Wake 0 of 7 from 3. And we both have talked about Wake's ability to be able to knock down threes. But the thing that would concern me more than anything right now are two things. Elon's out rebounding Wake by 3. And Elon has 7 assists on 4 turnovers. Wake Forest, no assists. As I mentioned a moment ago, seven turnovers. It's a long game. It's a long Except game. Then you settle in, and and you, know, you got to get a couple of stops if you're Wake, and if you're Elon, continue to keep pressure on the basketball and take them out of their comfort zone. In the exhibition against Alabama, Wake trailed 52-39 at halftime and won 88-80. Heldreth gets to the cup. If they didn't have quite as many turnovers, and they really made Alabama uncomfortable in the second half of that game, taking away shots, contesting shots, and being able to push the ball in transition some. Simpkins goes on the baseline for McKinnon. Carr is set to come back in, and at this whistle will re-enter. So that's good news because Wake Forest is already without Reed, waiting on that waiver. Monsanto still rehabbing the injury from last year, and Chowie Toka is out with a knee injury. Much better job defensively taking Carr as he comes back in the ball game. And that matchup is concerning me, I think, and Coach Forbes as well. Who's going to guard McKinnon? That time again, you had Hildreth throwing him. He took away that, that spin move to get to the middle of the floor for us to turn over. Hildreth. Nine points for Cam Hildreth to lead all scorers. Every team has to have a guy that's not afraid to go in there and do the dirty work. It doesn't matter what size you are or, or what position you play. Cam Hildreth is that guy. He scores a lot of points in the paint. Drives inside, makes the mid-range, will take a charge. And the more, I, I guarantee you this, the more active Hildreth can become offensively as well as defensively, 
the better chance Wake has of cutting in this deficit and eventually winning this ball game. Irvin, awkward shot, got it to go. Fredrickson did a nice job of contesting, taking away the, the lift. Just a good shot by a guy that can score the basketball, Zach Irvin. He's got 11 on four of four shooting. Grad student from Gate City, Virginia. He's been known to be a streaky shooter. Nice. Step through by Andrew Carr back into the game and delivers. You know, maybe being kind of taking that tumble a moment ago will get him back. Nick Dorn. Wow. Seven wow. of ten for threes for Elon. Last year, they were one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the country. Yeah, but uh, like I said, you know, that's, that's a right that gauge. They played against some teams that didn't give them some looks that they're getting from Wake. That's what we wanted to see if you're a Wake Forest fan. The answer from Parker Fredericks in his first career three. Oh, back cut. Yep, McKinnon caught it from Irvin and laid it in. Last year, Elon averaged 65 points a game. They've got 43 and still five to go in the half. Nice spin move in the bucket by Salas. And because you don't have a, a definite post inside, you can take the ball into the hip, but that's going to tear you up. Coach Forbes is not going to like that. You score a basket on one end and push it right down, three dribbles, and get another layup. Elon doing a great job in half court and full court basketball. L.A. Pratt with the answer, and right back down the floor, Salas two more. Right now, you don't want to get into a running game with Elon, simply for the fact that they're able to score, and they're getting too good a high percentage shots. Dorn left it dramatically short, and now Fredrickson for the veteran point guard. Hildreth, step through, and the foul. Here we go. If you need a basket, find an opening. Fielder is not afraid to go inside. The crossover gets contact and able to finish the play. Expect the contact, make the officials blow the whistle, but you finish the play. An easy call, gets there, and bam, right back in it. Yeah, I like it. I saw you came. I like it too. Let's see now with a couple paint baskets for Wake Forest. See what adjustments offensively. And what I mean is, uh, I thought the pin on the first pass. Just don't worry about taking so many jump shots early in the offense for Elon. Let's see how they kind of slowed him down and nurtured this thing to the half. So what happens in this possession? Better ball pressure right now by Wake. Double team on Dorn gets out of it, and he got fouled. Wake staff wanted a travel. They've cut a 21 point deficit down to 14. Some air purifiers can lose performance. Mission game against Alabama. All of the proceeds for the game went to the Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist Comprehensive Stroke Center. And that's because Steve Forbes, the head coach of Wake Forest, his wife, Janetta, suffered a stroke early in August. She spent 42 days in the hospital. A, a tremendous cause. She's doing much, much better, Stan. But Wake Forest Baptist Comprehensive Stroke Center, they do so much important work. Uh, you know, what he was giving us the statistic about, you know, maybe over 20,000 people every day are, have a stroke or affected by a stroke. His wife is on the road to recovery. It's a slow process, but she's there. I think she was in attendance last week, and maybe at the game tonight. But uh, a wonderful cause, and you've got to make sure you take care of that. And I hope she gets better soon. Salas knocks on the three. It was once a 21-point deficit, now down to 13. You've taken away some of the Elon easier looks. You force your offense out a little bit. So there's a double team right there. you got to get back. They've made shooters put the ball on the floor. Irvin getting into the paint. Fall away, falls out. Another good possession. Now you take your time if you wait. Run your sets. Inside, outside, get a shot. Marion.
Dave, if you're Billy Taylor and crew, you want to continue to be aggressive, but you want to continue to be aggressive in a smart way. Get some good shots. That's right a good there. shot, and Higgins yeah. strolls it. A little rub screen action and find your spot. And again, Higgins only averaged about 12 points a ball game at St. Francis. Really wasn't looked to be a big score, but a facilitator of the basketball, but he could make some shots. And, and that was a big one coming out of the timeout and after Wake had made a basket. Salas hits again. Second three, 12 points for Salas in his Wake Forest debut. He's got a different level of basketball. We'll talk about his basketball IQ his ability to make plays and understanding the game. You're going to enjoy watching Homer Salas. Dorn, a deep one. Yes, sir. Wow. Dorn's hit a couple of threes. He's got 10 in his first college game. I'm telling you, I mean, a freshman with some confidence on the road. Not hesitant to knock down the jump. Billy Taylor thought he was much deeper this year and could play more the way he wanted to. Three for Hildreth. And keep in mind for Elon, Sam Sherry, the 6'10 post guys, is sitting out right now coming off an injury. So again, that gives him more size, a little more length, and extra more depth. And nice, you see Wake Forest begin to get into a little bit of offensive rhythm there. They're hoping to have Sherry Pretty back shots. Thursday night against East Tennessee State. Irvin misses the three. And a foul on the rebound. When Elon faces ETSU, that's ETSU led by Brooke Savage, who was an assistant here at Wake last year. Pause. You've seen Irvin take that shot throughout his career. It's not as bad a shot as made him look going up there because he is a, a deep knockdown shooter. Might have been a little quick in the set, but he's a guy that's made 157 threes in his four-year career at Elon. So again, that's what he does. It was a good look. Maybe not the best shot, but it was a decent look. He'll get better. He didn't take him out for that. He took him out for a defensive purpose and the rest. But again, Elon's a team that they're hot right now. Could Wake Forest cool him off in his final 110? Wake started 5 of 17. They've hit 10 of their last 11. Wow. Make it 11 yeah. for 12. Salas, another deep one. The ability to score off the bounce, to create your own offense. That's what Hunter Salas is giving him right now. And better defensive intensity again by the defense. Rob Higgins has a bigger defender on him. Gives it up to Dorn. Dorn probing. Fires a three. Dorn again. He was a big time scorer at Chambers High School over in Charlotte. I think he thinks he's playing against West Charlotte or West <laughs> Metro, somebody right now. Because you know, he, he, is, he is hot. He's got 13 in the first half, three for four from distance. They can play for the final shot. This is the track meet that Billy Taylor had hoped for last year. Suited up only eight healthy guys much of the year. Wants to be deep, wants to play started, up and started, down the right court now. game. Started right now. Higgins with four, five. Higgins with two. Higgins in the lane, blocked at the rim. Elon goes to the locker room, up. It will against a lot of teams. He's showing that ability right now against Elon. What will Wake do different defensively? Better defense, put pressure on the basketball, take away back cuts. As soon as I say that, uh, we're late. But you think about this now, and it's an interesting question. McKenna got off to a really nice start, but he ended the, he ended the first half you know, with nine points. Didn't really get a lot of looks. Other guys took up the slack and scored the basketball. Irvin comes in, makes some baskets, so does Dorm. So you've got to just be a better team defensively. Higgins, the veteran at the line, each of his four years at St. Francis, Brooklyn, he averaged between 11 and 12 points a game. Well, he's a very solid player, and that's one of the things the Elon staff is so excited about having him. He brings stability. He's a smart guy, a senior plus that, that's stable. Not going to make a lot of mistakes. Scores when the opportunity has. Gives you really good defense and a good ball handler and leader. Elon is one of the youngest teams in the country, average age 19.9, but it's the veteran point guard they brought in out of the portal to kind of keep everyone in rhythm. Second chance for Wake after Salas missed the three. Carter Hildreth. 
but it's gonna stay here. A third shot on this possession coming up for Wake Forest. And Wake uses some of that size out, rebounded by one at the half. And 11 defensive rebounds, only two offensive rebounds for the Demon Deacons that time. A second chance opportunity for Carr. Probably should have taken that shot, kicked it out unselfishly, but you're able to get a rebound, another chance, and they screw off that. Good pass by Fredrickson. Heldreth a corner three, and it's down to nine. Elon led 36-15 with about seven to go in the first half. Higgins confidently from the elbow. Yeah, that ball action, that pick and roll action has been a big success for Elon tonight. Wake has got to do a better job stopping the basketball, containing it, getting closer, and then contesting those shots. Nice pass to Carr. Good job by Matthew Marsh. Very unselfish and continue to move it out the basketball to big fella Carr. Door and tough J. A little bump there from Hilder threw him off stride. Salas on the go. Higgins trying to draw a foul, couldn't. Three on one, Wake Forest. Hildreth fakes the pass, can't score, but the bucket will count. Begin to see the length, the size, and even the athleticism of those bigs from Wake Forest beginning to give Elon a little trouble. Drive inside, gets the shot contested. Watch this drive in there. Goes in there, too many arms, too many hands there. No foul there, and then a great move by Hildreth. That's an easy call, basket goaltending time. McKinnon, the leaner. They'll shoot two. You know, that's that's a program. You know, he's got the he's got the Australian experience of playing, but he understands how to how to play as you take a look we mentioned earlier rookie of the year played in the nbl in australia at a very young age and you could tell it with that move because see how the hesitation how his ability to draw the foul to slow down the tempo of what wake Forest. that's just a, that's just a big time medal again two gold medals aau team under 20. two gold medals under 20 years old it's a nice career, then you become the CAA Rookie of the Year. So the last four or five years for Mr. McKinnon has been very, very special. Only a sophomore. He was a late signee for Billy Taylor, <laughs> and it's because of a veteran coaching staff. Everyone on the staff has head coaching experience. They had ties to Australia. Zach Irvin checks back in. Okay, here we go. Elon trying to decide. Yeah, a little half-court pressure just to slow the rhythm this Wake Forest team, but they won't have a problem. Good ball handlers in Hildreth, also Miller. Hildreth was held. Watch the ball action and he hit Salas away from the ball, running on the baseline. So he had the opportunity to go high post and eventually look for the back door if it had been available. Miller. I said quickness that we're used to seeing from the point guard the last couple of years. Having a guy like Appleby a season ago. Think about how many times he just blew by people and got to the rim. Irvin. Shot clock at 10 for McKinnon. Better possession defensively by Wake Forest. Campbell spins, fires, can't get it to go. Yep. Trying to slice into a six-point deficit. Salas the fade. Just goes out of play. Billy Taylor trying to wait for the under-16 timeout. Tells his team to slow down. We're going to play through this. We've got good ball handlers on the floor. Make the right decision with the shot. McKinnon can't answer. Miller 
Elon's going to bring three subs into the game. Smart and Simpkins and Pratt. Wake trailed by 21 with seven minutes to go in the first half. Miller. Simpkins has it blocked. Another chance at it. Smart, not a great leaper. Didn't have the length, didn't have the size advantage. Nice job of keeping your position defensively by the big. Carr and the foul. It's a two point game. Wake Forest. Demon Deacon taking in Wake and Elon on opening night. They saw Elon race out to a 21 point lead, but a strong start to the second half for Wake Forest, 15 to five. And in the second half, everything has kind of come together, Stan. Hey, I mean, you know, just playing better defense. You're not as hot shooting the ball in the first half, uh, second half as you were in the first by Elon. And Wake Forest uses some of that side. Well, that is mom, was that the Merrifield brother's mom? I believe also, that was, yeah, I think that was. Kissy, yeah. So. A good season, dude. No doubt. Really Second half. Wake is 7 to 12 shooting. Elon is 1 for 7. Yeah, that's just better defense. They will the play. Some good job there moving your feet, forcing them out of the shooting areas. And then not letting them get back comfortable in the reverse. And an and offensive up. foul on Higgins. This is a great job defensively by Wake Forest. Now watch this, everything, not able to reverse the basketball, get great position defensively. Higgins, a veteran point guard, tried to fight through it himself, couldn't get that now a chance to take the lead by the Demon Deacons. Wake Forest has not led tonight. Miller penetrates and pitches. Salas thought about it. Back to Miller. Looking to tie the game. Shot clock at five. Salas, the two to tie. And Salas with a foul. Tell you what. That jumper by Salas didn't go in, obviously. But it really looked good. He really elevates at 6'5". He's going to be a matchup problem for smaller guards and a lot of bigs that aren't going to be able to guard him 18, 20 feet away from the basket. Simpkins circling, lost it. See, Elon, which depended so much on the perimeter shot, and a lot of times they were getting those shots because they would penetrate and kick it out, being unselfish. Now trying to go inside. They don't have the length, they don't have the size to go in and battle against the, you know, the marshes and the cars of the world. Hildreth on the go. He gives Wake their first lead tonight. Just took the ball strong, got in the paint about 12 feet away, elevates, scores, lead. with Irving, not letting him catch the ball, or if he does, get his feet set. This is a good battle on the baseline. Shot yeah. clock rarely got to this stage in the first half. L.A. Pratt unable to hit. Marion pulls the board. Another strong young player for Wake Forest. Going to give you some good moments. Marquise Marion. Miller, the transfer from Central Michigan, uses the screen. This is the three. Simpkins bobbled it, kicked it out. Pratt for three.
Hildreth ahead to Marion. Hildreth open. Shot clock at 10. Hildreth the fade. Missed the three. Second chance and one for Andrew Carr. Something we did not see at all in the first half. The second chance opportunities so far, Wake Forest doing a great job of dominating the inside, using the side. Watch this, long rebound. Take your time, big fella. Back him in, go up strong, get the contact, and now the possibility of the three-point play. Talk about somebody that's going to be an extended score. Carr averaged about 11 points a ball game last year. Look for those numbers that go up because he can run the floor. He has the ability to make the mid-range jump shot and can finish strong. And that was a nice play there to extend his lead for Wake Forest. No major foul trouble in this game. That foul on Zonka, but no one's got more than two. And in fact, the only player in the game with too smart for Elon and Carr for Wake Forest. You got to be a very solid possession if you're Elon. McKinnon back in the ball game. McKinnon turns the corner. Over the back on Kendall Campbell. In the bonus already, Stan. Yeah, well. McKinnon's got the limp. Get in there and make this a little stronger shot, recreate some contact. It's kind of flip that up. And, and so now, two things have happened. One, Wake has extended defense, put more pressure, started controlling the glass, what we expected him to do. Elon is struggling. Elon is not getting in a fluid offense. Wake's done a good job turning it up. And what's also happened, something very interesting, Elon's lost a little bit of their confidence with that. Elon had 55 points in the first half. They have got five in the first eight minutes of the second. It's not very good, is it? It's not very good. Yeah. The first half was outstanding. <laughs> the game is 40 minutes. Unless it goes to overtime. Much better movement this time. See if we can get a shot. Simpkins gets free. If you can move the basketball from side to side, inside out, you can move people and just be patient, you'll get a shot. And a lot of times, if you do those things well, you'll get a good shot. They did that time. Ooh. Simpkins came over to jar the ball out of the hands of Carr, but he's called for a foul. Wake Forest has come from behind to take the lead. 66-62, 11 and a half to play. There's never been a better time to... Wake Forest is 9 of 17 shooting, while Elon has gone 2 of 11. The game is completely turned, Stan. Yeah, you remember midway in the first half, we were talking about Elon out rebounding Wake Forest by about 3 or 4, and that Wake Forest had... Uh, no, no assist and seven turnovers. What a 10 minute mark. Since that time, Wake Forest has seven assists and only eight turnovers. And they started out rebounding Elon now by a plus five. If you out rebound the team, you forced him into some bad shots, you're able to cut into the lead. And then if you execute your offense, you can take the lead. You're doing that now by going to the free throw line where they're 11 of 12. Make that 12 of 13. 
I love how I do that quick math in my head right there. Like See how I did that real quick? Did you need pencil or paper? <laughs> I'm too sharp too early in the year. I'll go down quick. L.A. <laughs> Pratt distributes it to Harold. Haven't heard much out of Irvin in this half. Haven't heard anything out of McKinnon. Those two guys have got to find a way to score. We're not going to beat them off the bounce too many times. Pratt scores off the window. I like Pratt's athleticism. Remember we were talking before the ball game, I was telling you about a guy to keep your eye on is Pratt. Just a really good athlete that can make plays, and runs the floor real well. Slow to get up yeah. for Wake Forest, Salas. Yeah, Pratt, 6'5", kid out of Columbus, Ohio. But yeah, Salas kind of well, bumped into somebody, limping a little bit on that left leg under the basket. He's tough. He'll stay in there. Omaha, he's tough. Salas with a shot clock at five. Freshman Isaac Terrell, 12 in the game for uh, Elon. Gives him a little more athleticism. The young kid got some length. Tanner would love to see a basket right now from this team. Pratt's three, a little bit of a line drive. Hildreth with the rebound. Andrew Carr with the shot clock at eight. The double team comes and it had it knocked away. McKinnon leads the break. Irvin for three. Hit off the shoulder of McKinnon. Wake Forest scoops it out. Salas in transition. Salas attacks and he's fouled. Great hustle for the loose ball by Wake Forest. You kind of thought Elon was going to be able to make a basket that time. Had a nice look by Irvin. In that scramble, you're able to get the rebound, push the ball out, and get a basket. Salas was such a highly regarded recruit. He went to Gonzaga, the first five-star ever from the state of Nebraska. Steve Forbes thinks that he can be really special, and we know that Forbes has brought in one impact transfer after another. Well, last couple of years, just look at it. I mean, Appleby last year, you know, and then Williams carried the year before that, so you just keep bringing in great athletes to make plays, but they are really excited about Salas, and they're still kind of, you know, from the A.M. Melondis Williams played, man, he came on and just dominated the ACC. Obviously, ACC played a year, and, and, and Jake LaRavia is coming in. He's, is he still with Memphis? I think he's still with Memphis. First round draft. I, I thought I saw him in the preseason game, and he, Tyree Appleby last year, just boom, just a blur. Had that same success this time from Salas. Six point deficit, shot clock at eight. Eighth possession for Elon. Got an open look. Well, they get a second good opportunity. Nick oh. Dorn. Dancing those feet there. McKinnon with the shot clock at 10. Spins, fires, he walked. Wave off the basket. Thought they may have gotten away with a little bit of a walk early on that possession. Again, McKinnon just, just not in any type of rhythm. Contesting shots early in the game, weren't contesting those shots. He got some good looks. Lately, he's been really struggling to get shots, not on balance. He's a good shooter. And he's got to find a way to get on number quickly. Fredrickson replaces Zanka for Wake Forest. There is Fredrickson, the freshman. Inside touch, and a nice scoop by Andrew Carr. Yeah, they, they can get that most any time they want it. They'll be patient, get the ball to Carr, did a nice job keeping it up and strong, just too big and too strong against the young freshman. 
18 for Carr, a steal by Miller, off to the races, the layup is good. Yeah. The lead is 10, Billy Taylor needs a timeout. Defense leads to offense, Miller to the rack. A 21 point deficit has turned into a 10 point advantage. Offense in the first half was just fine. Their defense struggled a bit. In the second half, it has been terrific offensively for Wake. Cam Hildreth has nine of his career high 24 since halftime, and the defense has stiffened, Sam. Defense is stiffened. They're getting rebounds, and also something that you cannot overlook 42 to 20 points in the paint for Wake Forest. They've done what you kind of thought they were going to do, just took them a few minutes to get the memo go inside, get rebounds, pound, pound, pound. And when they do that, good things can happen. What does Billy Taylor's team need here? They need a shot. They need a good rhythm offensive shot from McKinnon by this guy, Zachary. Irvin, a chance for four! Go. Scary sometimes, man. Zach? I'm, I'm scary sometimes, man. Oh, you were a coach? I'm, yeah, yeah, but a long time ago. I mean, obviously, I didn't do a good job. I'm still here with you. But, you know, but look at this. Watch this. Little screen after the timeout. Little elevator screen down up. Gets a shooter in rhythm. First time he's had a really good look in a long time. And again, he's a great catch and shoot performer. But don't give him a lot of time. He catches, boom, gets rid of it. The left arm is a trick. He's got a little injury left shoulder. But it's his right shoulder that you better worry about. And that is a momentum changer. Big basket for Elon. Irvin's got 15. And the Wake lead is down to two possessions. Car and one. Aggressive, tough play in the paint. Well, it's just a, it's a very unfair matchup right now. Just going inside. The big fellas just take it over inside and score. Wake Forest continues to extend this lead. There's never been a better time to get away. Range jumper, little hands, he gets the basket, explodes there using the left hand. Watch the physicality right there, and then elevate. Finding the spot about 10 feet in, and then going inside, hanging in the air, getting some contact, and playing through it. Cam Hilder, 24 points tonight. His career high at 23 last year against Florida State. But what he's done is he's scored a lot of ways. He's been physical with it. And when Wake Forest needed the basket in the paint, Cam Hilders was one that got it started. I talked to Steve Forbes before the game. I said, if it's close late, do you know who you're gonna run the play for? And he said, Hildreth, Butt, Hunter Salas, and Andrew Carr, all really good options. The trail have 63 points on 22 of 35 shooting. See, that's the coach talking to a TV guy that don't know any better. You don't go gone well. He's gonna get the ball in Hildreth's hand and let him make a play. You saw why. Because he's physical, he's not afraid, he can make a play. That's a good that's a good coach's answer to TV people. You know, because we'll tell that kind of stuff. See, people watch these games and scout, but you know. I know, to get into Hildreth, but to get out of his way, because he's going to create something. You saw that. That's a good answer. I like it for early in the season. But you don't Probably. know. You don't know who's going to have a good game, who's going to have a bad game. you yeah. got to have options. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You do? Yeah. You knew Hildreth was going to have a big game tonight? Do, yes. Is he going to have a big game at Georgia on Friday? Probably so. Hildreth the fade. Yeah. You know why? You know why? You know why? Why? Yeah. Seriously, you know why? Why? Because he's aggressive, he gets to the basket, he takes contact, and he's not afraid to play defense. So if you'll do those things, you can average anywhere from 12 to 18 points if you're a scorer. How many you got it penciled in for against Utah November 16th in Charleston? I hadn't, I hadn't gotten that far yet. I hadn't seen Utah play, but Utah's usually long and athletic. You'll get 10 to 12, 14. We get, we get, you get two baskets in your half-court offense. You get a couple baskets, you go to the free throw line, you get a three-point basket, and you get something out of conversion. You look, you score, and you got 12, 14 points. Yeah, I mean, you, you can do that. That's, that's his game. Higgins had it blocked. Here come the Deeks again. In the corner, Fredrickson. See, that could have been a bad, you know, Frederick's is a good look and you wanted to take that, but to, to further that point of how a guy like Hildreth can score the basketball, he's on the defensive end, he sprints down to the other end, he feels a lane, they go to the other side, take a jumper, but if they miss it, he's going to probably get his hands on to get a second chance opportunity. 
Fredrickson will fire and hit. Yeah, we just told you earlier, this guy is deadly. One of the best three-point shooters coming out of high school in the nation. He is not disappointed. Great footwork, great finish, high follow-through and strong. Elon needs a basket, but I've said that before. Elon has 13 points in the second half. Smart had it blocked, and the Deeks have it again. Smart, 6'6", six, six, goes about 230, 235. Doesn't have the size or the length to go against Carr at 6'10". In the second half, all Deeks. Miller missed the long one. Second chance at it. Hildreth on the take. He'll dunk it. What'd I tell you? What'd I tell you? You didn't tell me he was going to dunk. Didn't say nothing about dunking. Dunking wasn't in the equation. It was about being able to score the ball, taking the basket, head and shoulder, great footwork. Everybody marvels at the dunk. I got the footwork. What did he do? Give him a head and shoulder fake, didn't travel, put it to the floor, and exploded to the basket. Yeah, he's uh, you want, How many points you want for Utah? How many want to give him? Yeah, how many? I haven't seen Utah right now. I haven't done any scouting in Utah. I would say very easily, easily 12, somewhere between 12 and 21. Next home game is Charleston Southern, November 24th. How many is Look at the foot, footwork. See that? See that? And then the headset, he was under control. Everything he did was fundamentally sound. Head and shoulder fake, got the defender off. Watch it. Put it to the back, head up. And then he recognized, oh, you're not going to come up and contest? I'm taking this right to the hole. And he left no doubt by finishing strong. Now, what happens if he finishes strong and he gets fouled? Possibility of a three-point play. Another point. I'm just trying to tell you there are a lot of ways to score the basketball in addition to running the offense. He's aggressive. He's got a scores mentality. But more importantly, this is a new one for you. First game, first season, head through this round. Instead of having the scores mentality, he's got a finisher mentality. 26 points, five rebounds, five assists, <laughs> 10 of 15 shooting, two of five from three. You liked that, didn't you? I did. Give it to me, now. It's the first game. It's early November. How many you know, is he going to average this year? I don't. I, 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 hadn't, I hadn't really thought about that. Depends on how many shots he takes. He's a high percentage shooter. But I would dare say he'll average more than 12-2. I mean, you got to remember, he had 12 points a game last year. But Appleby scored in so many ways. You had Damian Williamson. So you had guys that could score. So a lot of the baskets he scored last year, a lot of times kind of went unnoticed. Where now he's going to be a lead scorer. He's not a volume shooter. He takes good care of the basketball. I, I very easily, oh, 12, is, 12 is a given. Four-star prospect was the top recruit from the United Kingdom a few years ago. Here's Miller with a run out. And Elon has just imploded. And as happy as Billy Taylor and his staff were in the first half, they will not be happy with their execution, their shot selection, the ability to rebound, and more than that, their ball handling in the second half. Elon is four of 19 shooting in the second half. They've been out rebounded 18 to seven. Yeah. The one thing that has been impressive is the fact that they've done a really good job, and a lot of that, most of that happened in the first half is their bench score. They've gone from up 21 to down 15. Good close out that time, get him in the shooting airspace. Irvin, off balance, got it to go. Hey, he got, I'll give you that one. He got, that's a great basket by Irvin, but it's good defense. He didn't get the jumper that he wanted, did he? And the shot he had to make, he had to really work hard to get it. Irvin's got a team high 17. Elon was picked 10th of 14 in the CAA, coming off a eight-win campaign. Yeah, that, they'll, they'll be a better team than that. You know, the CAA is very tough. The UNC Wilmington, you know. College at Charles. Oh, oh, COC, tough. TK Very Simpkins good. scores. I mean, I mean uh, Wake Forest will be on the College of Charleston in the week. College of Charleston, UNCW, Drexel, and Hofstra picked to top the CAA. Yeah. Yeah, spacing, understand time and score. Hildreth, 28, might be one more coming. Rinse and repeat. Gets in the paint. Good elevation. 
physicality. Some guys, you get bumped like that, they're looking for the foul, and they don't finish the play. This guy says, okay, I, in fact, I would encourage you to hit me because then I know what's going to happen. Doesn't shy away from contact. And you make the free throws. So all those things I was telling you about, if you go to the free throw line four times make the free throws, you got 16, 18 points of ball. Wake Forest is 15 of 17 at the line tonight. Very impressive. Isaac Carroll can't hit, but a foul on the rebound. Elon will play ETSU Thursday and then head to North Dakota on Sunday. They're in an MTE in Rock Hill where they'll play IUPUI, Holy Cross, and Winthrop next weekend. Ooey pooey. Ooey pooey. You know, in that tournament you're talking about Utah, Houston's in that, Towson. Tough tournament. Tough, it's a very tough tournament. But, you know, we worry about Georgia. This game's not over, but, you know, the talk from Wake Forest becomes of the Georgia Bulldogs. Wake beat them last be year fast, here, yeah, 81-71. Georgia went 16-16 uh, and 16 last year. Mike White's first season at the helm. Yeah, the tempo right now. Miller slashing and scoring. Yeah. Miller's going to be a handful. Quick first step. Top player. Understands what's going on. And the youth right now and the experience of Elon really shows. A lot of young guys on this court. And, and, and I'll tell you something else that happened to them. They played so hard with so much emotion in the first half that, you know, the guy got pushed around a little bit and just couldn't fight back. You get, you get fatigued. First game, though, from Elon, I'm not disappointed. I'm disappointed they're not going to win it, but I'm not disappointed with the effort. That is a deep one for Miller. Yeah. He's got 15. That's his first three, the eighth three of the night for Wake Forest, and that's the deepest of the eight. All the things that did not work well for Wake Forest in the first half are working in the second half. One of the things that really worked for us was this. Hildred, head, shoulder, fake, puts it to the floor, jams it home. Watch this again in case you didn't miss it the first time. There's never been a better... With just over seven minutes to go in the first half, Elon led Wake Forest 36-15. It has turned dramatically. At halftime, a 12-point game, and in the second half, all Wake Forest, the Deeks on their way to a 1-0 start and thanks to shooting 58% in the second half, while Elon is 6 of 23 from the floor. The big game for Cam Hildreth, who has a career high 29, 15 in the first half, 14 in the second half. And, and also you look at something that really is impressive to me is the fact that they've outscored Elon 52, 24 points in the paint. And Cam Hildreth up there 29 points. You know, he's only two of five from three-point land. You know, he's been to the free throw line a couple of times and knocked those in, I think, five out of six. But he's done a lot of that damage. You saw that dunk we've shown a couple of times, you know, getting in the middle of the paint, just throwing a little floater. I mean, that the ability at 6'4", six, 6'5", six, to get inside, and we talk about it a lot, but it is something that you don't see out of every player. But he understands his game. If he can do that, he's going to get some bigger case of shot blockers. But what happens if he's able to get that inside and kick it out to a shooter? You're knocking it down. That makes an offense even better. A little high ball screen action, little, little twins here. So you get the high low out of this. Fredrickson. Andrew Carr. The block. Lean back, Simpkins. 
not sure how much contact it really was, but. Karras, eight of nine at the free throw line. Seven rebounds, 20 points. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a very, it's a very good line. That ties his career high 22. Nice touch at the free throw line. Man, you get your big guy that can make free throws and shoot over 70, 75%. Man, he's got nice hands. Wake Forest team's going to be a tough out. You've got depth. Simpkins fouled by Hildreth. Back to back 10 win ACC seasons for. Steve Forbes' team back-to-back -back winning years for the first time since the Dino Gaudio era. Went to the quarterfinals of the ACC tournament last year for the first time since 2009. Doubt about that, TK Simpsons. He played at nice Northwest. At Northwest. Florida State, I, just, yeah, yeah. I was about to say, he took, put up some nice numbers down at Northwest. Kid from Brooklyn. And again, something that Elon did not have a lot of last year. As you take a look at Simpkins, just great elevation there. Boom. Good job by the freshman not to foul him. But uh, they, they've got a little more depth. And, they, and I tell you something else they've got in addition to that depth. They've got some athleticism. They've got some guys that can float around the rim. Didn't see a lot of it necessarily as far as dunks, but, you know, the Nick Dorans of the world, you know, they did not play much of J uh, J J Don May Michael. Didn't play him a lot tonight. And we were uh, Sherry's not playing right now. But I tell you what, it's just right now, Billy Taylor, Billy Taylor's got to feel good about his team continuing to get better and better. Simpkins went to Northwest Florida State. Of course, Steve Forbes coached there, went 62-6 yeah. and six in two years. Here's Hildreth. Euro, buck. Yeah. Okay. Aggressive mentality. Simpkins foul. <laughs> You look in the paper. I guess papers, people still look at the paper, don't they? you? You see people look at the newspaper? Or you just get it off the phone now, all the schools. Is that what people do? I don't know. I, I try to look at the paper myself. Maybe not as much as I used to, but I still look at the paper. People look at the paper tomorrow and they're going to see this score and they say, oh, wow, Wait, just blew their doors. They don't understand. <laughs> they had to work for this game. They had to work very hard to get this done. Do you look at the paper, or you look at everything on the internet? I occasionally look at the paper. What what papers do you subscribe to? What shows up at your doorstep every day? <laughs> the paper shows up at my doorstep, and so the dog from the neighbors brought it to me. So, you know? <laughs> but I like it, you know, cut the usual, you know, Greensboro, Greensboro Record, Charlotte Observer, Raleigh News Observer from time to time, LA Times, got to check out what the USC Trojans are doing, the to coach, I know that. You know? But they fired their uh well, yeah, I was great. They a great chance. I had to. Give up more points than they do in basketball. So, you know. USA Today sometime. I love the USA Today. You should have all the color pictures. Hey, I gotta give a shout out right quick, too. My guy Stacy Palmer. I'm not supposed to talk about it. He's assistant coach over here. Played for me. Played for me when I was assistant coach at Livingstone. So, you know, I'm very proud of him. Billy's doing a great job. Greg Garinda, Josh Gross, Ryan Saunders, Sean Hallam, guys on the staff, but my guy Stacy's somewhere on the bench. You know, assistant coach a couple couple places. He used to be with Seth Greenberg. I think he was with Cliff Ellis at the time. Will you let me finish? I wasn't going to just tell you. I was going to tell you, tell you. Cliff Ellis, where else was he? Where else tell it? I think he was at USC Upstate for a period of time. He was with Dave, Dave Nixon. Nixon. Go ahead. What else was he? I don't you know. You didn't know he played for me, though, did you? I didn't know that. See there. See there. Let me tell the story. <laughs> Wake Forest has hit 100 <laughs> for the first time since the South Carolina State game last Man, November. It's been fun. It's been fun. And on a serious note, our thoughts and prayers go out to Coach Knight and his family. We lost a legend. 
one of his big games. I never forget watching him lose a game and walk up the street to the hotel when he ran NCAA's many, many years ago. But anyway, that's another story for that time. It's been fun, partner. It's been See you during the season. Cam Hildreth with 33 in a Wake Forest 23 point win, a game that they trailed by 21 in the first half. Deeks will 